Hey, what's up? It's marketalchemist.camp where we learn Elixir and Phoenix by building things. Today we're going to look at Phoenix 1.8, which is in release candidate zero right now. I've already done one video on it, but that was focused on Daisy UI, which is a design framework built on top of Tailwind CSS that's now included in Phoenix by default. This time we're going to look at the other major feature in Phoenix 1.8, which is scopes. As far as I can tell, this idea is borrowed from something similar that's uh, already been in the Rails community for a while, but it's a way of making apps more secure by default. It's not the only way to make your app secure, but it's a model and it is good to have something by default that locks things down where people can opt out of it when they know they want to, as opposed to everything being wide open by default. There's a scopes guide in the Phoenix docs, so I, I highly recommend checking that out, using it as your first source of truth. But I'm gonna go over what it looks like in practice today. You can see this is a new app from last time. I've also run a couple more generators. First one was Nix Phoenix Gen Auth, and I made it uh, just accounts users as normal. I didn't specify any other fields after this, Here's the user schema that was generated. You can see we've got email, password, hash password as before. And it doesn't look too different, but things do work a little differently than before. When we register a user now, we don't have an option to enter an email anymore. Hit create account. Phoenix Gen Auth will set up a mailer for you, it sets up swoosh. And in local dev, you can just go to swoosh or you can go to local. 4000 slash dev slash mailbox and you can get your your mail that would have been sent to a real email in production so it gives you a link you can use to confirm the account which i'll do right here and now that i'm logged in i can opt to stay logged in so this is just a, a magic login link or magic email link that uh, some sites like medium used from the beginning for logins it doesn't mean you can't use passwords though. It's actually already got that set up. If you go to settings, you can create a password for yourself if you prefer to have a password instead of needing to get an email every single time you log in. I actually do prefer a password. Like say if I'm on my iPad, I can just hold my finger on the, on the power button and use the fingerprint recognition logs me in automatically the sites that I, I use frequently. But you know, it depends on the person. Some people prefer the links. Now we've got the both. All right. So that is the user auth login setup logout. Most of that stuff is the same as before. The big change is just the uh, magic login links. Now I also ran another generator. These levels just have a name and a difficulty, which is an integer. So you can have like level one, level two, level three give them all names and the big change from before is because we've already run Phoenix Gen Auth this curriculum level schema is going to have users associated with it. So, uh, let's go to our level schema first so you can see there's a user ID here and it's expecting a user scope in the change set if we look at the curriculum and here's the curriculum context that got generated for us so you can see there are a couple of pub sub functions which are kind of handy since Phoenix generators didn't always used to make those and we also have the ones that have been here since the very beginning of context in Phoenix 1.3 got change delete update create get and list but there's a big difference now they all take an additional parameter, which is the scope. So in the past, list levels or list blog posts or whatever wouldn't take any parameters at all and it would just fetch all the records from the database. Now they only get the records whose user IDs match the user ID in a scope. The user ID in a scope is just going to be the logged in user. Um, we can see uh, same thing with get. We only get the record if the user ID matches, uh, create will put the user ID 
from the logged in user in the scope into the, the new record update will only, you know, only work if your user ID is matched and, and so forth. So basically everything is locked down by default. Uh, this makes more sense for something like this, like levels, than it would for blog posts where I, I would assume you want more people to be able to read a post than just the author of it. But uh, um, but you can, you know, I mean, there are ways to split it up. In fact, I, I had a little bit of a discussion about that on the Phoenix forum announcement thread. Speaking of this scope parameter, let's take a look at our user auth module and see where that came from. So at the top of the file, things are similar to how they have been. We have a bunch of functions uh, using the con that are related to traditional views. And scrolling down a bit, we'll see fetch current scope for user. This gets the uh, user out of the session token, which should be familiar if you've been using Phoenix before this version. And then we're assigning a scope, we're assigning current scope instead of current user. And the value that we're assigning is coming from a new module called scope in our accounts context. That for user, user. Going down a bit, we see the live view versions. So we have on mount. This gets called uh, during the mount part of the live view lifecycle. And this calls mount current scope, as does the require authenticated, basically all the others. And mount current scope is also getting the user out of the session token, and it's also calling scope that for user with that user. Well, let's take a look at this function. We can see in the accounts context there's a new module scope.ex, and it's pretty simple. This is a struct, so it's going to return a user uh, by default. That user is nil. And then that struct is just the module user user. So basically what happens when we run this is, or when we when we refer to it, we're gonna get a scopes or a scope user user like that. Alright, that's pretty straightforward. Now keep in mind when we work with uh, the scope or the current user in the past of looking to see if someone's logged in, the way it would work is we would match on the con or on the socket, either way. We're going to be assigns at the top level, and inside of those assigns, we would look for current user, user, uh, or maybe we specifically look for nil. Well, what we're getting now is very similar, except instead of current user, what's being put into the assigns or the con is current scope, and then that current scope is going to be the scope struct below, which is going to hold the user and user. Again, we could look specifically for nil. Now, this is the basic shape. Obviously, in a more complex app, you're going to extend this instead of just a user. You might have a user and a role, or a user and an organization, or who knows what. It's pretty much up to you. But however you do it, inside your current scope, there's going to be a struct and you can match on the things that you've put into that struct. And keep in mind, as I said at the top of the video, you don't have to use any of this if you don't want to. If you have your own authorization patterns that you prefer over scopes, you can just use those. Even if you want uh, authentication from Phoenix Gen Auth to set up your login system and registration with the mailer, set up have some basic secure defaults, uh, you don't have to use scopes. You can just pass in dash dash no scope when you call subsequent generators in the future, and then they won't inject uh, the scope as the first parameter of all of those functions. They won't do anything related to scopes, and everything will work as it did in Phoenix 1.7. Previously, you will just get uh, a wide open module that you will be responsible for writing whatever authorization rules you need for. Now you might be wondering, why is it that this generator's output is different depending on whether or not you've already run this generator? Well, when you run Phoenix Gen Auth, that will make changes to your config.exs. See this scopes block at the top? This was added from running the auth generator. Then future generators check your config file, and they check for this block, and based on this block, they will 
dish on a jack scopes related things and the newly generated live views or or uh, HTML or, or context or whatever. So uh, this is the thing that you might want to customize as you customize your scope struct, you customize your, your authorization setup. I haven't done that myself, obviously. All of this is new, but that, uh, that same guide that I mentioned, the scopes guide does cover this. So you can uh, go through this as you make something a little bit more more custom or complex. Now, I would say to sum everything up, the high level thing to keep in mind is now when you run next Phoenix Gen off, you will get some scopes related code generated in your user auth module. And then after you've run this, all subsequent generators by default will add a scopes parameter to all of those functions that I showed really doing anything with the database and also to the pub sub. So if you generate uh, a new set of live views or, or whatever in the future, after having run this, this auth generator, you'll have to make different versions of each of these functions for things that uh, users don't need to be logged in for. But once you're aware of that, it's, it's not, not too confusing. All right, hope this has been useful and I will chat with you next time.